I'm always busy with uh, analog electronics. And this is, uh, say, a kind of very, very simple video where I try to test the analog um, clock, an analog clock that was made in this way. Perhaps it's ten, I bought it 10 years ago or so. This is the time scale. This is the type plate. Uh, I bought it many years ago and I found that it didn't work. And that was a kind of problem. Anyway, so I took it apart. Uh, you can find many, say, uh, metals inside. For instance, here, all these contact strips. I have solved some contact strips, but anyway, uh, this clock is ready to be discarded. Interesting thing is, of course, old, always the motor. So that is the idea of this video, the showing the motor of a dissected analog timer clock. It's connected normally at least in my case in the Netherlands to 230 volts at 50 Hertz. There's a gearbox here and here we have a gear that moves in a certain sequence. I, I don't know exactly uh, how quick it moves because the motor was defective. Though there are of course some interesting things to tell the first interesting thing is that the winding here on the primary um, coil of the motor is 4800 ohms. And then I have measured that uh, in a DC way. Of course, on 50 Hz, the say AC resistance will be much higher, you can say. Uh, calculate that. Uh, there are many uh, possibilities on the World Wide Web where you can calculate the AC resistance of a coil, but the DC resistance always gives a good idea about, say, the properties of such a transformer. This is also a transformer, surely. So, uh, that's a the first interesting thing to tell, 4800 uh, 4, ohms DC resistance of this coil. And you can see it here, it's this coil wound with very very thin wire and of course that wire is also useful in electronic circuits, especially coils, say coils in the uh, 100 millihenry range, that's, uh, you can make these coils with th this wire, so not in the microhenry range, but say 100 millihenry, etc. Trust, uh, test try uh, go to my YouTube channel where I have made many videos about uh, testing coils, uh, measurements of the inductance, etc. Anyway, um, well, we now going to give the coil of the motor some energy. And you can surely hear and see wh why this clock didn't work. You hear very strange sounds. And when you look inside the gearbox that's here, I want to touch the 230, don't want to touch the 230 volts. 
you can surely see and hear what happens. So, uh, the gearbox is not okay. And this gearbox is made uh, in China, say, approximately 10 years ago or so. Uh, no problems with that, because this clock has functioned very, very plop properly during many years. And, well, the problem with the, these uh, clocks, not this clock, by the way, this clock, this clock is okay, was okay up until now, but perhaps these cheap Chinese analog time clocks is that they get very hot when doing their work. For instance, this clock. Uh, 6C Yidong Electronics. Uh, I have to say surely that I don't trust the way that this clock was made. I tested it a few times and I found that the, the whole unit got very hot. And that's bad. This clock, by the way, did not get hot. hot and this is the motor from this uh, clock. So here you see that a kind of lever tries to pick up uh, pick up something inside that gear unit, etc. etc. So anyway, no hope for this motor. So that was more or less all to tell. Thanks for watching. My advice is don't buy these cheap Chinese clocks. Pay something more for a good one that doesn't get hot. And about getting hot, uh, that means that uh, when you are on vacancy and you use these clocks, could be that such a clock uh, dysfunctions, doesn't function any longer due to heat, plastic melts, etc. etc. Anyway, and of course, this is say, oh, the best ID. I see now that even this coil, so now it doesn't work any longer. Perhaps I have forgotten one resistor. So the coil is uh, burnt out. That's bad, of course. So perhaps this was not the right demonstration, but in general, you, I can expect, you can expect that such a coil works. So it doesn't deteriorate. Perhaps it needed a resistor Anyway, well, kind of sloppy conclusion at the end of my video. I had not expected that, that such a motor could easily burn out within a few minutes, 10 minutes or so. What did I do wrong? I'm not sure. Perhaps the, I, the, the coil needed uh, a kind of voltage dropping resistor. Anyway, thanks for watching.